Lab, everybody. This is part two of the Dynaco PAS preamplifier repair. In part one, I repaired the power supply and installed that SDS cap board. I'm a firm believer in those cap replacements. Get that selenium rectifier out of there, get some fresh caps in, and make your Dynaco nice and quiet. So now we're going to move into part two with the assistant of my Edna Valley wine. So we'll do a quick checkout and you can see I already have the scope hooked up with the audio generator. Then I'll address some of the questions that came up in part one. Alright so first off I don't know if you recall from part one but the owner said that this base pot had an issue so he sent me one of the original Dynaco replacements. So what was going on with this pot is when you turn it, she get about mid-stroke and there'd be a snapping action, okay? I measured the pot and it appeared to be okay except for this little mechanical notch, I guess you could say. So I thought, well, maybe somebody had replaced that pot and that was one of the ones that had the little center indent so you knew where to set it, but that was not the case. I removed the pot. This is an original Dynaco 750K pot. And when you turn this, I'll get it right up here so you can hear it. Hear that? So I looked in the slot here, and I was looking at the wiper arm that's going across a little carbon path. And there's actually a crack in it. This thing must have taken some kind of an impact, and it damaged the internal workings. Even though the pot still has the proper resistance that mechanical function was not something that was desirable so out she came I put in the new one she's nice and smooth no snappity doodahs going on there so you can see the base action you know Dynaco has always had this strange base response so watch I'm going into this thing with about say 25 to 30 Hertz I'm gonna turn this base down now watch when I turn it up. She'll come up and there's a funny dip and then she'll jump. This has always been a complaint about the Dynaco tone circuits. I always thought it had something to do with like a specialized pot. But it actually has to do with the circuitry that these pots are feeding. So anyway, that's just an oddity I wanted to point out. The other thing I did so I changed the power switch. This is the original switch. And she's actually in decent shape, but because of the way I switched the AC line coming in, I needed a double pole, double throw style. So one half of the switch goes to the actual preamp circuit, so it goes to the power transformer. The other half of the switch is the high current feed for the switched outlets on the back of the preamp. Let me cut to a quick little sketch I made and we can discuss this because this was one of the questions that were brought up in part one. All right guys, I didn't have time to make a super scientific video file for reference, so I just sketched this out with a pencil on a legal pad, all right? So this is what I came up with for the AC input to the PAS preamp, okay? So here is the plug, and if you remember, this is a two-spade, non-polarized plug. And there was a question about that, we'll get to that in a minute. So one side of our line comes in, goes through the fuse, goes up to this side of the switch. I guess I should have drawn these guys, okay? So there's a switch. Goes through the fuse, switch, and then that hits the primary of the preamp, okay? So that is a low current feed, so the transformer is protected by this fuse. Then, the other side of our double pole switch has a hot feed, and she goes over here and hits the switched outlets direct. So these outlets would be for your external amplifiers, which hopefully have their own fuse protection. So no, there's only one fuse, and that is to protect the preamp, okay? Now, let's talk about this AC input plug, because some of you said, well, that should be polarized because you want to make sure that the neutral goes here and the hot goes here. Okay, 
let's kind of look at this diagram, even though it's not the prettiest thing in the world. We got the primary of the power transformer. This is a, just a coil. It's floating like in outer space, okay? It does not know what ground or neutral is. All that it knows is that it's going to have 120 volts across it. And then it's going to give you your high voltage and your low voltage, which is dis distributed through the preamp, right? I get it. So if I were to flip this plug back and forth, would that primary know that, oh, neutral's here and hot's here now, or hot's here and neutral's here? No, it doesn't know. It is simply going to take 120 and convert it. And then these outlets, which are also feeding amps that have floating power transformers, they don't care either. They just want their voltage, okay? So I hope maybe this will clarify why I used the same non-polarized AC plug that Dynaco did. Okay, Edna, I have a new diagram for you to support. Why we talk about the rectifier in the Dynaco PAS. Some of you wrote in to me and said, hey Terry, why didn't you use the diode rectification on the SDS board? You abandoned that and you went back to the rectifier tube. To make the story short, guys, here's why. You know, I work on a lot of guitar amps and guitar amps normally come with a tube rectifier. Some people think it's really cool to put in diodes, but then they lose that natural sag and grit and the dynamics that seem to come from that tube. The sound now becomes kind of brash and very punchy, okay? This preamp was designed with a rectifier tube to give you the proper voltages to the 12AX7s. You take that out, the voltage goes up. It throws the performance of the preamp out of spec. So that's why I use the 12X4. Take it or leave it. Okay, so that's a wrap to the Dynaco PAS preamplifier repair. I hope that the answers that I gave you guys to these questions were satisfactory. Okay? But what it comes down to, guys, is when these units come into the shop, this is how I repair them, and these are the methods that I use. Right or wrong, customers are happy. Okay? So that's what D-Lab's here for. I'm going to repair this stuff and share it with you. Okay? I'm doing my best. There's a lot more cool stuff I've got lined up this year. A lot of major changes have happened. So stick with me. I won't let you down.